Hello, welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. Today we're in Oregon's capital of Salem and my guest is Carl Wilson from District 3. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure, thank you. Now you've worked very hard on Oregon's marijuana regulatory um, committees. Tell us how that's going, what's not working, your feelings about that from your participation so far. Well, thanks for the question. Uh, I uh, have been involved in this process now for a couple of years from the very beginning. It's been an amazing opportunity to bring a plant out of prohibition and out into the light of day and attempt to put the uh, regulatory framework around it. Uh, it's been challenging. I'm overall satisfied where we have gone. There are a couple of little issues that are concerning to me right now. But uh, really, as we look at it, uh, it's been an amazing opportunity to do this. And I think, by and large, we've made good decisions. A couple of things I might have wanted to do differently, but I'm not sure it would have made any difference in the long run. Well, we've seen Colorado take the lead, Washington followed suit, two quite different approaches. And so what have you learned from observing those two other states? Well, I think we've learned that there are things that we want to, uh, want to avoid. I, I feel that we had the ability to go to school on their experiences. And uh, a lot of the differences are just nuances for the most part. But uh, there are some values that we have tried to carry through this process. I think those uh, values of uh, turning it into a market of uh, really pure capitalism, trying to make the business as normal as we can, as quickly as we can, has overall been a good aim. But um, again, there are some things that as our regulatory process has matured, I think we need to take another look at. Well, in comparison with Washington, <clears throat> Washington met some small community resistance and some uh, concerns about not having one crop right next to another crop in a state that's highly agricultural mm -hmm. like yours. And then also the initial taxation on it was so high that many people didn't feel like moving into a legal system was worth the extra cost to just yeah. buying from their suppliers that they were accustomed to anyway if it's cheaper and then that's where your price point yeah. rate comes. So well, it's yeah. you know, kind of have to have something be more affordable to drive a person to a different marketplace. Yeah, I think you've sized up that problem well. Uh, it is an issue for us to try to keep the price as low as we can. And of course, uh, people are always wanting to tap into that revenue stream and there's a little frustration there. But I think as we uh, look at what we've done, we've tried to keep the taxation low because we realize that if you do go past the tipping point, you're uh, encouraging people to go back to the black market. The same involves other regulatory things. If we make those two egregious, uh, again, we make the black market attractive again. So we're always walking that tightrope of regulation, capitalism, and everything else. And I think when most people who have mixed feelings about legalizing marijuana or any drug, they're always interested in the medical aspects. So can you share with us from your experience now, two years into this, what you've learned about the medical marijuana aspects? Well, you know, I do appreciate you asking that question because that's where the action is right now. And that is that we have after doing all of the things for the adult use market, the OLCC side of things, we've stopped and thought, oh, wait a minute, what about the patients? And uh, the existing patients who have been enjoying particular strains and cultivars for a long time, if we continue to merge the medical program in with the uh, OLCC side, what about the patient? And we've grown uneasy in the last couple of weeks about that thinking that in all of this process, we have begun to hurt the small grower and the patient. And we need to perhaps rethink this whole idea about merging the medical program and the recreational program, as it's called. Mm -hmm. Well, when we're thinking about the medical aspects in healthcare, we have a strong health and wellness movement in this country involving yoga, astrology, meditation, all kinds of um, organic foods and um, hemp is a protein source and also as a fabric rope is uh, making some great progress there. And tell us what you're doing on that front. Well, I have um, just in kind of an accidental sense uh, gotten really involved in industrial hemp. Uh, we're always towing the line with the feds on industrial hemp because industrial hemp by nature is not intoxicating and it has a very low THC level. And so what we're trying to do is craft an industrial hemp program where we have the seed and fiber 
aspect nailed down with the feds where they have no objection to what we're doing. I think we're there, but we have to perfect it a bit. Uh, but that first, and then we deal with the cannabinoid side of industrial hemp, and that is that uh, there are many people who are great fans of uh, uh, CBDs, a cannabinoid that is non-intoxicating in industrial hemp, and many believe that it has a great value on health as used in various ways. And so we're trying to develop a program that the feds will uh, let us get by with on the CBD side. That's a challenge, but I think we're going to do it in this session. Well, thank you for being with us. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank you for you being on the set. Thanks this so much. This is Representative Carl Wilson from District 3. I'm Dana Cowley, and thanks for watching Charter Local Edition Northwest.